So, you're broke. Or, maybe not. But either way, you've clicked on this video. So, hello everyone, I'm Baku, and this is the Beginner's Guide to Spina Making. Spina is the main in-game currency in Torum. It is very important, as it is used in almost every aspect of the game. It serves several important functions, like buying items, equipment, and upgrades to enhance or better your character. It is used as the only medium of exchange between players to trade items and services. Spina is also often tied to the player's progression and power. TLDR Spina is very important. Torum is a very player-driven economy game, so, the supply and demand of items or any services are primarily set by the players rather than the game devs like most games do. This includes things such as trading, crafting, and selling items on the consignment board, as well as providing services to other players. Now, there are a lot of ways to make Spina, and that's what I'm going to show you in this beginner's guide video. The first method that we're gonna be looking at is farming. Farming is one of the most popular, easy, and best ways to earn Spina for most beginners. It's one of the most effective ways to gain Spina, especially mob farming. But to actually farm, you have to have a dedicated farmer character, a character with a luck stat. Luck stat, if you didn't know, increases drop rate. And you need a very high drop rate because it increases the chances of obtaining the desired drops in a shorter amount of time, making farming more sufficient. When creating a farmer character, you should prioritize having a good AoE clear, being able to one-hit the mobs, and having a good MP region. Weapons that are good and popular for farming are Staff, MD, Halberd, and Bow or Bow Gun. If you're a newbie, I suggest starting with Staff, MD, or Halberd since they are the meta and can get you a party easily. There are a lot of high-value drops that you can farm. And disclaimer, in this guide, I will not just give you a list of items to farm and that's it. Maybe I'll give some best items to farm, but I won't do those quote-unquote best farming spots 2023 or those 5 million per hour spots, etc. Because if everyone does the same thing, or farms the same thing, its price goes down, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to ruin the economy. Instead, I'm going to teach you how to know what to farm. Material farming is the first Spina Maker farming method. Torum has a material points system that is used for many things, including crafting, equipment customizing or statting, and player housing, which includes building houses, furniture, and growing food ingredients. As for the different types of materials, first we have metal, which is mainly used for crafting 90% of the weapons in-game. It's also always used in statting weapons. I'd say metal is the most used and important material. Then wood, which I'd say is also one of the most used materials in the game. It's used in crafting, mostly as the main material needed for bow and bow guns. Wood is also always used for both weapon and armor statting. Next is cloth, which is mainly used in crafting armors. It's also used in statting. Then medicine, main material needed for alchemy and for land buff ingredients. And of course, also used in statting. Then beast, also a staple in crafting but is mostly used in statting weapon and armors. Last but not least, we have mana, the hardest material to acquire. It's used in crafting, mainly magic devices and some staffs but it's generally used to stat full crit equipment, which is the standard stat for every weapon. For material farming, you want to farm high-level mobs as their process material value is way higher than low-level mobs, so you would also need a high-level farmer. And if you use this method, I recommend that you only farm the most important and sought-after materials, which are metal, wood, and medicine. Metal and wood are always staple materials for crafting, Meds are always in demand, especially for land buff ingredients, because some players, including myself, are too lazy to farm them, so we simply buy them. It is also required in alchemy, proficiency leveling, and crafting, which you can always guarantee someone is doing. The next farming method is recipe farming. 
there are a lot of craftable items in Torum Online, but only a few of them stand out or being crafted the most, either because they're the current meta or because they're the easiest and cheapest to craft for leveling proficiency. In this farming method, we're gonna farm the recipes for these equipments and sell them for profit. One of these equipments is the Adventurer's Garb, which only needs one recipe, Birdwing. You can easily farm this even as a beginner. And though the price isn't super high, it's always a fast and guaranteed selling item, because armor crafters always bulk buy this to craft the two-slot garb. You can also farm the materials for the latest craftable equipments. The profit is way bigger, but you have to have a strong high-level character, as you're gonna farm high-level bosses for this. Another recipe farming tip, if you didn't know, is that to level up blacksmith proficiency, players need to craft either weapons or armor, and what you can do is farm the recipes for that item and sell them. Some popular weapons players crafts for leveling proficiency are the spider lily katana and lightning bolt spear, so its recipes are very worth it to farm. Again, you can find more profitable recipes to farm, this is just my recommendations. Refining materials also are a staple, as they're used to refine or strengthen equipment. That's why it's always in demand on the market, especially ores, mostly mithril ores. Anti-degradations were also a staple, but their usage kinda died down since the refining system changed. And I don't think it's worth it to farm anti-deg anymore if you compare the profit per hour that you can make to mithril ore farming. And ever since the refining system changed, players can now plus S their equipment with only mithril ores. Okay, here's Baku's farming recommendations. Farming is a good and easy spina maker, but I'd say it's not the best. It's inconsistent and sometimes inefficient as the price can be unstable. Not to mention how boring and monotonous it is to do. Farming also is very time-consuming and also the most prone to botting. If you didn't know, these bots are mainly the reason why some items' prices crash. Hundreds of them over farmed one item, then flood sell it to CB. And what happens when the supply of an item is very high and there are very few demands or buyers? The price drops. Because these bots are already selling their items for a very low price, other competitors have no choice but to undercut them if they want their item to sell. And since there are very few buyers, sellers, bots and players, just keep undercutting each other until the price crashes. Anyways, despite that, farming is still a very good and easy way to make Spina especially for beginners. You can't go wrong with farming if you're a beginner. Unless you're farming Krista. Krista farming can also be a great way to farm Spina, as they're also very valuable and pricey, especially the limited event ones. But I don't personally recommend them, as they are heavily RNG based. You can either get one in 20 minutes or in 20 hours of grinding. For the most part, the profit per hour of farming rocks is significantly better than farming these colored stones. Speaking of RNG, you can try your luck at treasure hunting. Palulu will give you these keys after you complete chapter 1 of the main story quest. These keys are used to open the chests scattered throughout the game. These chests are a gamble. You can either get good high value items like crystals or skill books, orb items such as orb shards, ticket pieces, books, etc. But most of the time, what you'll get are material points. Treasure hunting is best done with a party, as more keys mean more chests to open, and thus a better chance of finding valuable drops. This is a fantastic daily task to do once every three days. Treat this as a quick activity, because you won't always get a good drop. Sometimes you win, and sometimes you lose. The next Spina method is quite advanced, and that is crafting. We have blacksmithing, which is equipment crafting, making weapons and armors. Then alchemy, which is creating potions and consumable buffs that offer various benefits. However, it is important to note that crafting is not a beginner-friendly activity, 
and it is primarily aimed at advanced players. To craft efficiently, you need to have a high-level character, preferably a capped-out one. Additionally, to craft efficiently and effectively, you must level up your proficiency in either blacksmithing or alchemy, which not only requires a significant amount of time, but also a ton of resources. Going on to crafting, first we have is alchemy or synthesizing. Crafting potions and consumable buffs can be a profitable business, as these consumable buffs are always in demand for players, especially the hardcore meta players. However, a character with tech stat is required to be an efficient and effective crafter. If you didn't already know, the tech stat boosts your success rate when using a production skill. This includes all types of production, not just synthesizing. This also includes blacksmithing, equipment crafting, refining, and statting. Going back, as an alchemist, you can craft a lot of consumables that have various effects. The most popular ones are healing potions for tanks and damage enhancers for DPS. Check the CB price, look at what's profitable, and farm the recipes and craft them. Most of the time, it's better to farm the recipes than to buy them on CB because sometimes the profits you make from crafting items can only cover the cost of the recipes themselves. And sometimes there's barely any profit at all if you buy the recipes. If you believe there is no profit in crafting the item, you can simply sell the ingredients. This applies to anything crafting related. Anyways, alchemy is a long process, but it can make you a quite good amount of spina. Not exactly the best, but it's decent. The next crafting method is blacksmithing, crafting clean equipments. This is one of, if not the best Spina maker methods. Blacksmithing is very profitable because of the high demand for equipment, which is necessary for players if they want their character to be stronger. And as the game progresses, more and more equipment is being added. And the same for the players. They always need to upgrade their gear if they want to keep up with others. The best example of this is the yearly anniversary event. And if you're a blacksmith, this event is a huge Spina making opportunity. Because of the high demand for new equipment upgrades, as a crafter, you can sell your crafts for a high price, leading to a big profit. Okay, quick tangent, I still remember high attack halberds and katanas are selling for 20 to 30 million back then. It's literally a life changer. That was the time when crafting wasn't as prominent as it is today. And at that time, there were also very few halberd and katana crafters. Back then, if you bought a katana, it was most likely crafted by this player. Anyway, like I said before, crafting isn't an easy job. To be a successful crafter, you have to have a capped out blacksmith with very high proficiency. A capped out character is needed to craft the highest potential, while requiring high proficiency to craft high difficulty equipment. You can't just craft anything. Each equipment has a potential that can only be raised by crafters pure stat. And different weapons require different stats to increase their potential. These potential points are what's being converted into stats. So, different crafters will have different builds. Pick what you'd like to craft. My only tip is to craft meta weapons, and stay away from armor crafting. Crafting can be profitable as equipment is always in demand. High attack weapons sells at high price, but there can also be a lot of competition among crafters, making selling harder or forcing it to sell at a low price to compete. Also, leveling up proficiency is very time-consuming and expensive. And the only times where crafters make Spina is when there are new craftables or on anniversary event. Since we're already in blacksmithing, we should talk about statting or customizing equipment. Statting refers to adding stats to a clean equipment. This is one of the best and biggest Spina maker. But statting can be a tedious task as you need to have a ton of material points reserved. Just to stat one weapon, it consumes a ton of material points. And you can't just randomly stat, you have to follow a formula. You have to put stats one by one, it is a lengthy process. But the hard work is worth it, because offering statting services or selling statted weapons can be quite expensive. 
Studying services can cost anywhere from 1 million to 3 million or more, depending on the stats and materials required. Mana or crit-oriented stats are particularly valuable due to their rarity and tend to sell well. You can also try statting god stats, they have low success rate and a gamble, but they're extravagantly expensive. Look at this, a god stat, look how much it is, I was so shocked when it got sold. This is the same bow that I've used in one of my Botana videos. So yeah, gambled stats sells for a lot. Refining was once one of the best Spina makers back then. But ever since the refining changes, the cost of plus S equipment has kind of dropped. If you didn't know, refining back then was pure luck. Zero to plus B was still hard. But refining B to S was a pure nightmare. The success rate for plus B to plus A and plus A to plus S is a whopping flat 1%, no matter what or you use. So it's really, really hard. That's why selling refining service is very profitable yet also very risky, because it can literally bankrupt you if luck isn't on your side. But now that the refining system has changed, it is much easier for everyone to refine their equipment to plus S. I won't go into great detail about refining, but here's a quick explanation about the new refining system. Equipment has this PT on the bottom of its base attack. For the sake of this video, we will refer to it as Pity, as it functions in the same way. The Pity increases every time you refine the weapon, and every 150 Pity adds 1% more success rate. The amount of increase is based on the ore used. And the higher the tier, the more points it gives. Here's a chart of the different ores and the corresponding amount of Pity they give. In my opinion, the most optimal and cost-efficient method is to use mithril ores. It's relatively cheap, and all you need to do is spam refine until you reach 1500 pity. It doesn't matter whether you're using a tech or luck character, as we're only trying to accumulate pity to get to 1.5 thousand, which is a 10% success rate. You can choose to do less or more, but I recommend aiming for 10% as a baseline for safety. My only tip for refining is to increase the pity or success rate before fully committing to upgrading it past C. If you rush to plus B with Ori Ore and have a low success rate, it's still highly likely that it will degrade when upgrading to plus A or plus S. You can still offer refining services or sell plus S equipment, but I don't think it's worth doing anymore. The long time spent for a low price isn't worth it especially since everyone can already upgrade their equipment to plus S. This last method of Spina making is quite complex. This doesn't involve hours of excessive grinding but requires a knowledge of the market and a bit of luck. These are flipping, reselling, and investing. Let's start with flipping. So, what is flipping? Flipping typically refers to the practice of buying an item at a low price with the intention of selling it quickly for a profit. Flippers often focus on finding undervalued or underpriced items and then reselling them for a higher price. It's very similar to reselling, but they're quite different. While flipping is focused on finding underpriced items and quickly selling them, reselling involves strategies. Resellers may buy items, hold onto it, and wait for market to change or for the value of an item to increase before selling it. Which can also goes hand in hand with investing. Investing spina or buying items that increase value over time. You can flip anything. You just have to be a CB police and be persistent in checking the CB all the time. If you see an item with a low price compared to the same item, don't hesitate to flip it. It may take a while to sell, but it sells. For reselling and investing, it's best to invest in items that increase value over time, such as dyes, particularly weapon dyes, rare limited equipment appearances, and limited event crystals. Especially the collab crystals, since they only happen once, their prices skyrocket over time. A perfect example is the Talon collab. These DDEX and DR crystals now are worth 15 and 12 mil each, which is insane. 
It's important to note that these strategies are a high-risk strategy and take a lot of time to see profit. Risky because you don't know what items, and when and if the item's price will rise. So, be careful when doing this method. I won't originally add this cause I don't personally recommend this, but gemrins are a great way to make spina but they are a huge gamble. If you didn't know, gems and gemrins works like this. This is a gem and it's expensive. This boosts the base drop rate of bosses. There are different types of gem, each have different base drop rate boost. We have rare drop gem, super rare drop gem, legendary gem, glory gem, and ultimate gem. These gems are orb items, and can only be obtained through the orb shop, or small chance by recycling avatars. Players who got these gems sells it to a player through party slots. The higher the base drop rate, the more expensive per slot is. Then they run it on whatever boss the buyers wants. This can be a very profitable yet also very very risky, since it's a gamble. Example, you can buy a glory gem for 1 mil, run it to a boss with Krista worth 3 mil. If you success at getting drop, then that's to mil profit, if you don't, it's 1 mil lost. Overall very risky. So, that's all for now, I hope you've learned something from this video. I did my best to keep it concise, but as a beginner's guide, I felt it was necessary to explain some things in more detail. So, thanks for watching, like if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe for more content like this, and let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or suggestions for future videos. Okay, this is Baku, and I'm eating out.